Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us on another episode of the Untitled Car Show. I am Ike. Proc is out again. Uh, it's not with the wedding stuff. We're having some scheduling stuff with our day job thing. So uh, it's just me again, but I'm joined today with a great guest, uh, Mr. Regular. He is Mr. Regular Car Reviews. If you want to go find him on YouTube and watch the series on there, and you can find out the Twitter and everything else through there. And I hope I didn't screw that up too bad. <laughs> nah, you're fine. Yeah. Uh, so I, I got to say, I am a big fan of your series. Um, I found Thank you. It, yeah, I found it maybe like uh, about six months ago. And I oh, just, yeah, I. Not knew, recent. Yeah, I, I, and I watched everything. And it's a wow. lot of stuff to, it's a lot of stuff to absorb, but it's, I think it's, if you haven't seen the series, for those of you listening, it's a good way to go through is just binge watch it from the first season to the current season. It is amazing to see like the development as everything goes along. And like it kind of went from like an art house style, like almost like an old like B movie film, very a <laughs> la uh trying to think uh, Evil Dead almost, like quick cuts oh. and everything. And now it's more of um uh, it, it, it still has a very art house element to it, but it's, I can't quite put like maybe, maybe Woody Allen esque. Like it's. Ooh, that's a compliment. Yeah. Well, I hope it's a compliment. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, it is. Yeah. For yeah. Manhattan and everything. Yep. It, it is one of the things I watch. Like I talked to uh, Matt Ferrara a couple of weeks ago, and mm -hmm. you watch him and you go, this has got to be shot more than like, you know, seven idiots in a room doing this. And it is, that is the most they ever have. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you can kind of tell you're a bit on the shoestring budget, even after all these years. And is this kind of like a conscious decision or like, why do you like, obviously there's like a financial aspect to it, but. Oh, very. Yes. It, it would be wonderful to have a, a staff, but it's just me. And, uh, the Roman, the other guy who helps me write, mm -hmm. uh, he's the closest thing I have to an employee, uh, on paper. He's an independent contractor an independent writing contractor, but he also sings the songs. Some of the episodes are written completely by him. Others are written completely by me. Most are about 50, 50. Uh, but I do the majority of the filming, all of the editing. And most of the time I'm doing the entire narration, mm -hmm. the, uh, in, in all in all, it only takes about two hours to film an episode. Um, we work very quickly, um, and that's largely due to using still photos uh, when we can. And um, we have it down to a rhythm. Of course, a lot, of your, a lot of the better shots come from moments when we can scope out an area and find nicer places to film. But it all still is mostly handheld uh, and our gear which is getting oh gosh in the beginning gosh we were filming with a a uh toyota echo mm -hmm. with a single vacuum cup mount in the back window and later i got a 2007 honda fit which i still have now and what i do is i ratchet strap a tripod down to the back uh the Honda Fit has four cargo loops or hooks yeah. or kind of kind of D rings uh, bolted into the body uh, in, in the cargo area. So you can put a tripod down, and then you can get two ratchet straps and, and and wrap them around the top and go through the bottom, and you can suck that thing down onto the onto the well. It's the carpet really that sits on top of the Space Saver donut, but uh, that works pretty well. Uh, recently, I got a <clears throat> sorry. Film Tools uh, triple vacuum setup, uh, which works even better, but one thing it can't do is it can't pan like a tripod would. So normally when we're filming, I'm driving, and Roman is in the back filming out the back uh, during, during the chase shots. And that allows, you know, having somewhere back, someone back there with their hand on, on, the, on the, what do you call it, the pan handle of it. The, the handle for panning and i'm sure it has some fancy yeah. college name that doesn't yeah. matter so so but someone who can follow the car as we go around corners and then, then have another hand on the, on the tripod that helps as well but the majority of of the review comes afterwards mm -hmm. when we write it 
Well, it's interesting for people who did who people didn't see RCR. Uh, it's one conti- continuous narration from beginning to end, and some of them people get upset. Like you didn't even, you, I didn't, you didn't even let the car rev. I didn't even hear the car. I'm like that's not the point. <laughs> well, it, jumping around a little bit, it's kind of like, and again to go back a couple of weeks, and I blew a lot of smoke up Matt Ferrara's ass about how great all his photography and like all this stuff is. But they capture very well, like, what it's like to drive a car and kind of have it for a day. But, like, you don't sit and rev the car you own day after day after day. You you, you just get kind of, like, bored, not bored with it, but, like, used to it. Like, in marriage, mm-hmm. you just become comfortable with it. Mm-hmm. And, like, somehow, like, you know, you don't, like I said, you don't necessarily rev the engine or take everything out. But you kind of get the... Uh, like what it's like to be married with this car for mm. a few years. And it's it's very interesting. I I want to say tie the two together. It's almost like the gorilla nature of it seems to kind of Im- push itself towards that, I guess. I don't know. Of course, yeah. because when you don't have a lot of gear, your your uh, the entire nature of each episode has to rely completely on the narrative. Mm-hmm. Um I think Zach Clapman, sorry to drop names. Uh, from the smoking tire, he said, you know, you could do what you do with just still photos and pan left and right. As long as the narrative is punchy and interesting enough and people will forgive it. That's not to say that, you know, we're not, we're going to slack, slack off as far as, uh, as far as filming cars goes, but mostly it's a, Ooh, I hate to use qualifiers like that. Mostly. <laughs> that's, that's a, that's a horrible, horrible way to dilute a sentence. It is a exercise in prose. I hope that doesn't sound too haughty, but I have right next to me selected works of Emily Dickinson, and we'll be using that in a future review. Like, okay, all right, I've written, uh, have I tried to emulate Emily Dickinson's poetry in the form of a car review? Nope. Let's do that. Yeah, I I feel like one of your latest tweets was a haiku, but I didn't want to call it out because i'm very bad with haikus i was like mm. I'm pretty sure there's a haiku in there somewhere but i do like when you yell at people and it's i think it was the chicago episode where you basically yell at them like you need to go read a book like yeah 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 <laughs> they can pick them up yeah yeah i man you've been all over this great country is there any better food than what's in chicago like total aside like uh, say again i said is there any better food than in chicago i mean as a total aside i just every time. Uh, I... uh, speaking of food, there we go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was on the toilet. Awesome. I, that's a. <laughs> now I'm not. <laughs> Remember to wipe. Uh, okay. Don't forget to wipe. Uh, I, I know you've been waiting for the voice, and here it is. I I have it. I okay. That. That's kind of how I found you is I was watching and I, I hate to kind of push this upon you, but I used to love watching Mr. Plinkett and I don't know if you've seen him. Of course. But is that where the voice comes from? Because it's very like that. It's, it's a well, style. well, the gravelly voice comes from a guy I know in college <laughs> a little bit. And, uh, and Mr. Plinkett's just easy to do. It's all in the jaws. <laughs> yes. Uh, right like, here in my basement. <laughs> my ex-wife. Yeah. And I look like my ex. That, that's that's a little bit. Uh, oh, the guys from what is it? Uh, um, oh, was that Red Oh, Venture Brothers. Oh, Re- yeah, Venture Brothers. Oh, the the henchmen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally. Take my Nissan stands off. Oh, it's so sad he's dead. Well, you know why he stopped okay, doing Harry. him is because his voice was too hard on his on the uh, actor. So really, yeah. Uh-huh. Which is funny to me. It's like that doesn't seem like a terribly difficult voice. <laughs> but, Must have been doing a lot of takes then. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm sure that whole film production thing, you know, doing cartoons is a lot more hectic than doing a couple of goofy internet things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I think we got off tra- topic here somewhere. So. Okay. <laughs> we could go back. I could sit here and reminisce all day about goofy internet stuff too. So mm-hmm. just, just so we have that here qualified. Uh, all right. To bring it back, someone on topic besides like the plinket, and you said you had an old guy from college where you got the voice from. Do you like? Do you have any other inspirations for like all the goofiness and everything? Oh right, uh, uh, um, 
John Valby, uh, whose name is Dr. Dirty. Uh, if you look him up on mm-hmm. YouTube, just type in Dr. Dirty, <laughs> and uh, it's a guy playing a piano, singing dirty songs, and that's that's all it is. I may know who you're talking about. I've He's told... been around. Yeah. He's been around for decades. <laughs> Yeah, I had an old side project I used to do, and one of the guys I worked with was obsessed with a dirty talking piano player. But I didn't find him terrible. I didn't find the guy I was working with terribly funny. So I was like, mm. eh, yeah, we're not going to check that. But now on your recommendation, I'm going to have to go. But it's it's a definitely wear headphones when you listen to it kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, don't no, not in the workplace. So no. Now, bring it back to another thing. So. You've been all over this great country of ours. Right. Well, not really, but thank you, thank you, thank you well, for the I mean, compliment. I've been in Pennsylvania, a <laughs> little bit in Jersey, a mm-hmm. little bit in Maryland, and then was quick. Well, we did drive all the way down to Florida and back, and then we've been in L.A. twice, and then we just recently drove up to Portland. So we're getting there. We did the two coasts. Now we got to go in the middle. Oh. oh, wait, we did drive to Boulder. All yeah. right, so you're right. We did get around a bit. Yeah. You've been in every time zone for more than the time it takes to drive through a time zone, which I think Thanks. qualifies as everywhere over this country. And <laughs> you've driven a lot of cars all like around. Um, do you have a favorite car or a favorite like review you've done personally? The or? favorite, my favorite review day was the day I did a Buick Grand National. That was number one yeah. um, because it did live up to the hype for me. It was a ball to drive. Uh, I still want an AW11, which is a Toyota MR2 first generation. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's going to be for me. That's not going to be me spending the Internet's money to buy. That's going to be money I earn myself. Yeah. Um, hence the Vagabond Falcon, which is our latest project, which is a 1960 Ford Falcon, uh, which we are building into a road trip machine so we can go around, go to events and meet people. Because it's weird for us to go to a car show and be like, Hi, we're here, and we don't have anything to bring outside of either my Honda Fit or Roman's 2004 SN95 V6 Mustang. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, on a personal note here, I just basically found out I'm going to lose my Volvo V70R, which was kind of my like, hey, look, the goofy guy in the V70R. So that's going to be fun. So, mm. <laughs> head gasket thing. But no, well, the, happens. The, yeah. It's, well, Again, not to get too much on me because you're here, but I bought the car. It was between the Volvo and a V10 bi-turbo Mercedes C-Class wagon. Or no, it was the Avant. It was an A5 Avant. And it was like, well, the Avant's blow a lot of head gaskets, so let me go with the Volvo so I don't you know, have to get a new head gasket. And this will be the second one in less than a year, so fuck it. Bummer. <laughs> yeah. So you've had a f- favorite. Do you have a least favorite, like? You showed up and you were just like, I do not want. Yeah, there was a car I didn't want to get in. I didn't want to get in. And it's not an attack against the driver. Uh, he drove quite, he drove more than a few miles to come see me just for a point of view video. And it was a car that I'm very interested in. But this version, this particular example of one wasn't very good. Uh, and it was a Subaru Brat in Bradenton, Florida. I shouldn't have been driving it. That, that car was plain old unsafe. The brakes hard, hardly worked. The, like they grabbed at the very bottom of the pedal travel. Yeah. Uh, it, I mean, I mean, that's Florida, man. You don't have safety inspections down there. So some cars, granted, it was a work in prog, uh, uh, a work in. Uh, it's beginning work, phases. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, that car is in. Uh, it was in rough shape. Yeah. And I, I didn't feel uh, safe in that at all. But the guy, the guy was great. The guy was great. He knew what he had. And uh, I'm glad we just drove around town and like first and said, thank God that car was a manual that you could engine brake. <laughs> yeah. Because if it wasn't, that would have been very terrifying. Mm-hmm. Now, is, yeah, I saw that video. I was like, this is how Mr. Regular is going to die. Is he's going to get into, and we're not going to know what happened to you either because no one's, you, the like coroner's report's not going to have Mr. Regular in it because you're all incognito everywhere. But right. It's going to be, <laughs> we we're very entertaining today for you. After the crap, it's sleep time, I'm guessing. But it's, I totally lost my train of thought. 
So let me that's just, okay. Let me just go throw it on another thing. Do you have a car out there that you've been dying to get reviewed and you just have not? Dodge been... Omni. Dodge, Dodge Omni. Omni. Still uh, haven't found one. We're we're moving into season eight now. Still haven't found a Dodge Omni. Um, I know a guy with a Dodge Omni that I will talk to. Uh, where are you? I am in Maryland. All right, you're not too far away. I'll I'll convince him to go up to uh, Pennsylvania for you. So. Well, you, you show him the videos. Here here's the thing. This happens all the time. My friend has a blank, and yes. I'm like, I'm sure he does. Show him the videos and have him call me because people who are really in the regular car reviews, you know, want to see X car on the show, and I want to do it. Mm-hmm. But when you drag someone else into it. They're, they're, it, it's not fun for them because there's like, what's this guy? He just talks about penises the whole time. Why do I want my car on this? And they show up and you're out filming and they're checking their watch. They're asking, how long is this going to take? And they're not having a good time. And, uh, and then I'm not having a good time. Mm-hmm. So show them the video. This guy's trying to find a Dodge Omni. Mm-hmm. If, if they're lukewarm on it, if they give you a, well, if it sounds like they don't want it, then then that mean if they're throwing hints that they're that, that like, well, how long does he how long does he take? Well, yeah. Then then, then the answer is no. He's mm-hmm. trying to tell you I uh, don't strain our friendship. Another thing is this is this is a weird rule, but it's been it's it's made some uh, uh, shoots weird. And it's not going to be a hard and fast rule, but it's going to be a suggestion. Hmm. Don't bring your wife. <laughs> Unless she's really in the cars and likes dirty jokes, she's not going to have a good time. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a very sexist thing to say, but you know, you know, more than one or two shoots where the wife is just there looking at her phone or crossing her arms or pacing around the parking lot because that's all an RCR shoot is. It's us on a parking lot for three hours. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to strain your relationship with your significant other for this. Don't bring your kid. That's, that's another thing. And if I find it somehow weird, like dad brings his kid along, like my son likes it too. I'm like, ah, I don't really, he's going to sit there playing on his iPad the entire time or sit in the back seat. That's uh, that. And also, and also crowds draw crowds. Yeah. Uh, we have a bunch of people around, then some other people see, you know, what are you doing? And then pr- pretty soon some old lady gets scared and then whoop, whoop, or some old man says, I don't know what I don't know what's going on in my community. And then uh, here comes the popo. Not that that's happened, but you know how small towns can be. Yeah. So... My ideal shoot is only one to two cars, yeah. as in subject cars, mm-hmm. uh, because it just looks like a few people in a parking lot taking pictures of a car. So that's it. Yeah. Oh, it, it's funny you bring up the kid thing. Um, my daughter, she's only nine months, so she doesn't quite understand. She finds your voice when you do the weird gravelly voice absolutely hilarious, and I hope to God she doesn't understand what the hell's going on. But... <laughs> Like the other day when we had the issue when there was the miscommunication of the date, which I'm going to blame myself for. The reason I popped on Periscope is because my little daughter was being absolutely a bear. And it was like, I heard you doing the voice or doing the Periscope thing. I was like, rah, 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 and she calmed down and like was like, hey, I can listen to this guy talk for a while. Oh, so, OK. I don't know if that's good for you or not good for you, but, you know, that's facts. So. Well, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. So how did were you always into cars or were you late? Oh yeah, I cars? couldn't wait to get my license. Mm. Um, I, gosh, my uncle owned a Chrysler dealership in the nineties, mm. and so you would always go to the. I won't say the name of the place, but uh, he doesn't own it anymore. He long since retired, yeah. and. I would go there and just get in all the cars and flip all the buttons and open all the ashtrays. This was the early nineties. So there's still all ashtrays. Yeah. And, and I thought, wow, these are neat. Mm -hmm. And you can get into, you can get into trying to psychoanalyze me. Like what was the deal? Everybody has their deal why they like cars. For me, it was an escape. 
Mm-hmm. It, it was a place where you can feel in control. And it's your own personal space, even for a little bit. And, but having fun cars was uh, fiscally prohibited. Yeah. It's more expensive to own a, a car than it is to own a motorcycle. True. As far as maintenance and everything else goes. So I owned mm-hmm. nine motorcycles as, as I grew up. And finally, when you move out of the house and your parents have no long, have no more power over you because I, I was way into bikes mm-hmm. before I was really into cars. Um, because you all had that experience with, uh, when you're riding a, a bicycle and feeling the drudgery of pushing that thing up a hill, that part you have your, you have your mountain bike, maybe it's a 12 speed, maybe it's an 18 speed and you're clicking down, you're, you're down clicking through the gears and finally, you get to the smallest sprocket on the front and the largest sprocket on the back. And that holds you for a little while, but eventually you get tired or the road starts getting much, much, getting far too steep. And you're doing that thing. You're off the seat at this point. You're standing, pedaling, trying to get more torque. And you just run out of steam. And you're just dreaming of that time when you had an engine. And we're like, if only I had an engine. And, and you're 10 yeah. and you understand it. Maybe you own a dirt bike. Maybe you already have the, 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 uh, the satisfaction then I didn't. Mm. And I'll never forget, uh, the, the year between high school and college, mm-hmm. uh, I bought a motorcycle against my parents' wishes. I think it had no title. Wishes. Yeah. I'm sorry. I said I think getting a motorcycle is always against a parent's wishes. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. It's a death machine. Yep. So what did I buy? I bought a scooter. I bought a <laughs> 50 cc or rather 49.9 cc mm-hmm. Yamaha Champ, two stroke oil injection. So I had the two tanks. You didn't have to premix. You just dump in oil, dump in gas, off it goes. Mm-hmm. Uh, had no license plate, no title, no license, and mm-hmm. they were like. Well, you guess you bought that. Bought it for 300 bucks. And rode around the yard for a bit. Mm-hmm. Then I wanted to ride it on the road, and that got into arguments. I mean, my you know the emotional pleas didn't make sense. And then, uh, then it went away. And then college comes, college goes. Mm-hmm. I went through my Jeep phase for a while where I really wanted a Jeep. And uh, glad I didn't. Glad I didn't do that. That that requires a lot of money, and you, you know, yeah. you, I had a Dodge Neon throughout uh, throughout all college and and afterwards, and and then I bought a motorcycle when I was living in Lansdale, Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. 1982 Honda CM250C, which would later become the Rebel, and from there on, I was I was hooked. I had a motorcycle either one kind or another, uh, as I went through and then eventually, well, I've never had any fun car. I mean, the, the Falcon is the first fun car I've ever bought. Mm-hmm. That's so it's fascinating because a lot of car reviewers are, you know, most of the people I get on here and I talk to from like, you know, Bob Lutz to, oh. um, you know, even Matt Ferrar and a couple of the guys, they, they get into cars and they get into the fun cars and they get into, you know, the fast cars at a very early age. And like the motorcycle thing is kind of, it's not necessarily new to it, but it's like being that being like the only fun vehicles you've like personally owned is different. And I wonder if that's like, you know, we all want something else, you know, you have your weird Volvo guys like what I am. And then you have, you know, your Ford Mustang people, your Camaro people and everyone, and they all want different things and different aspects out of their vehicle. And the motorcycle is at once the like most practical thing that you can get because it's literally a motor, two wheels, and you transport yourself and whatever the hell you can carry. Right. And then it's also like it's dangerous and it's, you know, fun and it's kind of everything you'd want in a vehicle. And it's, I wonder if that's kind of like, what you like are out there like reviewing is like everything kind of if you know the perfect vehicle is kind of the motorcycle and you just kind of accept that like the car is going to be a flawed entity unto itself mm. 
because you have to make sacrifices for it one way or the other. You can review, like, because no one makes a bad car anymore, but no right. car is good at everything. And a motorcycle is one of the few things that can be, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 terrible at <laughs> it's terrible at taking care of you. You're True. what what whatever temperature it is outside, it's going to be that times ten in the worst direction in in, in the direction you don't want. Yeah. If it's kind of warm outside, it's going to be fr- it's going to be boiling. If it's already hot, you're going to be dripping with sweat. Mm-hmm. If it's uh, if if it's ooh a bit chilly outside, you're going to be freezing because uh, it's well, man, especially now. I don't have a I don't have a, a motorcycle right now. Uh, I'll buy another one eventually. Lord knows I always buy cheap ones. Never spent more than like one thousand two hundred dollars or. No wait, the most expensive motorcycle I ever bought was one thousand seven hundred dollars. That was a uh, Suzuki GS five hundred uh, in in very good shape. Ended up selling that to a fan uh, who didn't know it was me. <laughs> um, he just saw the ad on Craigslist. And then once he saw, I, I put stickers over the speedometer. So the speedometer went, uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. No, 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 no. And, uh, he, uh, he saw that and he, and he looked at me and goes, holy shit, you're him. I was like, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so that was fun. He asked me to sign it. So I signed, I didn't want to mark up the bike cause the bike was almost perfect. Mm. And, uh, so I signed the underside of the seat. And, um, gosh, I got off track. What was I talking about? I, it doesn't matter. It's a good track to get off topic on. I'm curious. Okay. Has anyone ever signed? Have you, anyone else ever asked you to sign the vehicle? Like, yeah. When I was in, when, or rather we, uh, Roman and I were in, uh, Danville, California, which is east of East Bay, San Francisco. Mm-hmm. The, uh, we announced that we were going to the Black Hawk Cars and Coffee Meet. Mm-hmm. And uh, some some people showed up very specifically with all their Ford Fiesta ST engine covers, plastic engine covers. They just had them in their hands. Yeah, it's like, will you sign this? And I'm like, all right. They, they were good. They had these silver sharpies that shows up well in black plastic. That's very. I like that. <laughs> I like that you don't bring the car to get signed. You just bring the plastic. <laughs> you just bring engine the cover. engine cover. Yeah, they were there for the. For the cars and coffee, so they had their cars there. But uh, yeah. it is kind of easy. You just hold, you just have this black plastic thing the size of a cafeteria lunch tray. Hmm. All right, sign it. Yeah. Well, oh, and I signed a, a, an engine manual to like a, I think it was a Volvo, I forget, and uh, something else. No bodies yet, but give it time. Yeah, no, no, no girls. No come boobs up. yet, but yeah. give it time. That's disappointing. So, uh, on that, so and nothing you've reviewed, like no one's ever asked you to sign the dash, a la Carol Shelby. Oh wait, uh, I signed the a B pillar, like mm-hmm. behind the the driver's seat. Signed mm-hmm. that. Can't remember if I signed a dash or not. B pillar is kind of a weird one, but I, I get I get it. Uh, but that that brings me to another point. Like you, no one, you know the if you like go look for Mr. Regular, like there's like people like, I think we saw him in a review mirror here. But <laughs> you, you can't find your face anywhere. And you know, everyone only knows you as Mr. Regular. Like, right. Like, is that just because you don't want to be harassed by a living crow? Like hell out of like, there, trolls, there or? is a very practical reason why I started, uh, being anonymous because I had a particular job that, mm. um, if people found out, well, not only would I probably be canned, I'd probably be blacklisted from ever working in this type of uh, uh, career mm-hmm. uh, again. So, and that'll come out eventually. I'll, I'll start talking about my past, but it started out as a necessity. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, when, when I quit my job, I thought, you know, to do RCR full time, mm-hmm. I uh, didn't see any reason to change that because how would that help? Really, just like, hey, here's my face. Now you can now. People have come to know that it's a faceless car show, and that's what they want. So, mm-hmm. eventually, someone will take a picture of me, put it online somewhere. Mm-hmm. Probably be on some 4chan message board or something. <laughs> Actually, on there, people have uh, found me already. But it's 4chan, and no one pays attention. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't let them hear you say that because ah. 
they're on my list of people probably not to piss off. But oh, it's middle school kids. What do you want? Is that what it? See, the problem is, is like there's there's a bit of an age difference between us, as far as I can understand. And like 4chan was like that's what all the high school kids are doing when I was in high school. So uh, I still picture those people I know who can get into places that they shouldn't be able to get to online being there. But I guess they've kind of left. So you know, weird thought process. But <laughs> so. I totally lost my train of thought again, man. I am sorry for that. It's it's fascinating to me, though, that I remember now. So one of the cool things about it is because no one knows your face. It's almost like they say Keanu Reeves is like the perfect person for like an action star because he has like no expression. So you can paste yourself like psychologically onto him. Interesting. Yeah, it's some weird bullshit I read in film class thing but it's like you know why is he good at these roles it's because you can pace yourself onto him and it's like you can put yourself like because the pov is from the top of your head in most of the shows as you're driving around you know there's a couple of outside shots but it's you can picture yourself driving and you kind of get how it is oh, to be in a car i think i think you keep it going as long as you can about like not not showing the yes yeah. because it's very stig like too like what's the mystery who is it and then right. write a book so there you go. Yeah. But let, let's go to your little partner in crime here then. Roman writing the songs for the show. How did that come across? It came across because once we uh, joined Google AdSense, you couldn't just put licensed music in. You had to make your own music. It had to be 100% created by you. So uh, you can still have the old ones. Like all the first season, mm-hmm. they're not monetized. They're made no money off of those you were just i was just doing them to do them Mm -hmm. so they have all the all the uh all the stuff on that you can't have anymore but the second you monetize a video it has to be everything created by you or you have to have permission from uh whoever content creator you got it from which includes like just a picture now there is some wiggle room as far as creative commons and uh and uh oh what's the other law uh not fair use Fair use, yeah. yeah. I mean, in in one case, I used some pictures of uh, Jonathan Ward's icon machines, like mm-hmm. the icon Bronco. But I have an email from him saying I could do that, mm-hmm. like use like a bunch of pictures from his uh, uh, press page on his website, like press pictures. Um, but uh, so Roman, my friend from college, he can play the guitar, mm-hmm. and so and he can write a few songs. I mean, um, he goes to open mic nights a lot. So there you go. He'll he'll make up a he'll make up a little ditty, an yeah. opening ditty, closing ditty, and uh, that's that works. And you've done one song, right? I've done one song with a Casio keyboard, <laughs> uh, and I need a drum set. I played drums in high school. I want to get a him and I should make a record or an EP or something like that find a guy actually tim strickler plays bass he's a guy uh, we know in uh, uh pittsburgh so you, you can get a band together make some like digital album i need like a roland uh, uh a roland electronic drum set that'd be good so so i don't annoy my neighbors huh. what's the point of having neighbors if you can't annoy the crap out of them Just oh you don't want to do that no 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 be good be good when you're out in public and that's my biggest worry when we're out filming. Do not be seen. Do not even look like you're filming anything. Be so irrefutably. Have you had any issues? Have Has there been a scary moment where you thought, hey, you're getting pulled over? Or like, please don't no, be called but or anything? I know what people are thinking by the way they're standing and the way they're looking around. And that's just a benefit of having lived for a while. Yeah. And, uh, if if you don't if you don't want to get in trouble, don't be seen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you're out in public, look like a nice person. I even tell people when when you show up to a uh, unless it's winter and we have coats on, mm-hmm. uh, if you can help it, don't wear dark clothing. Mm-hmm. That's why people joke that oh, Mister Regular is dad fashion with his polo shirts and his cargo shorts and his New Balance sneakers and the bucket hat. I do want to look like a dad, not a father, but I want to look like a, uh, oh, geez, quote, bye-bye birdie. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to get it wrong, but uh, uh, fine, upstanding, healthy, honest American boy. This guy is not a problem. 
tell people don't show up with your insane clown posse shirts, even though they're a, they're a, they're a good band and they donate a lot to charity. Sucks that if your image is bad. I don't don't even wear Metallica. Um, keep your clo- colors happy. Colors. Um, tuck your shirt in. You, you your biggest problem to be getting harassed if you're making YouTube videos doesn't come from any law enforcement. It comes from overzealous, overzealous, uh, concerned citizens, specifically older men who are not aging well and who resent people younger than they are. And you can picture a guy like that and what he looks like. That's going to be your problem, problem person. So now granted, you don't see too many of those people in parks, but some of them, we noticed something, we film a lot on public spaces and we noticed something, particularly in the wintertime, that there are people who go to a park, park their car, don't get out of their car, stay in the driver's seat and start reading a book. Now picture this. This happened at least five times. This this sounds. I would understand it if there was a prostitute in the vehicle. Like that. <laughs> like, oh no, officer! I was just reading a book. Like, no, this five times this has happened. And not always men, but people who come to a park, park their car, and just read. Now, I understand that, okay, they're getting out of the house. They want to be outside, but it's cold outside. At least get out. Your, your, your driver's seat's full of farts, and it's all, the, the padding is all pushed down. You know, get out of the car, get in the passenger seat. The passenger seat isn't as worn out. It's probably going to be more comfortable. Th- there is that unique, detached, protected move of driving somewhere, sitting, and not getting out of your car. You can read at home, and I understand, okay, maybe these are people who retired, got to get out of the house and do something, but wouldn't you rather want to read in a coffee shop? You know, have a donut? It's going to It's gonna be, yeah. you, you can go to the bathroom there if, if, if you want, you can be around other people. Maybe these people don't want to be around other people. Generally antisocial. I, I I've watched want parents an apologists to go after these people. Yeah, I've watched parents watch their kids play soccer. Just today, I was out running, ran past the, the where the soccer fields are, and there's the sort of middle school soccer, or maybe like fifth grade soccer, elementary soccer, mm-hmm. and soccer game going on. Most of the parents are out there on lawn chairs. They got a hat. Maybe one has a blanket or something. And they're watching the soccer game. And a few parents parked in the parking lot and are watching the game from their cars in the driver's seat. What's up with that? That is. Well, I do want. Don't you want to be closer to the action and watch the game? Or maybe you're not really all that into being there. Maybe you're listening to the radio. I didn't get near the car. Well, like that's like the weird, like I can almost picture like the, like weird new age parent and being a new parent. I kind of run at these people every now and again. It's, they don't want to be the helicopter parent that they fear they are. Mm -hmm. So somehow like the barrier of like, well, you know, I watch my kid play. I watch him from far away, so it doesn't. He doesn't feel like I'm being overbearing. It's like I some, can, uh, something about being in the car, though, just makes it but worse. But the car, you, yeah, you're sealed up. Yeah. Like uh, if you want to, like he didn't even get out of the car yeah. to watch me play. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so 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 when I that. so when I'm I'm out there filming. Yeah. The weird thing is the people who come to the park and just stay in their car. Uh, I, I imagine these people are the same type that uh, have binoculars in their kitchen window. I, I, Which I need to point my fingers at myself because I do have a set of binoculars and I keep them in the kitchen 
I, because I, sometimes you see stuff yeah. happening out there and uh i want to check it out while i make dinner or while i make breakfast or something or i'm waiting for the coffee no you the point where you cross i think that weird threshold with the binoculars is when you take them everywhere with you i used no, to yeah I used to drive the Baltimore, no, it's not Baltimore, it's the Suitland Parkway, which is just south of D.C., and every day I'd be going to the day job, and there would be this weird pickup truck I'd always see, and every chance he got to stop at a light, he would, like, slam on the brakes to stop at a light, whip out the binoculars, and then look at nothing in particular. It's like, why are you, hey, why are you in a weird-ass pickup truck with binoculars, but go somewhere, do something. You obviously are like old enough to be retired and you are out here like fucking clockwork. And that's when you become yeah. the weird guy. <laughs> he's in traffic. He's not on the side of the road. Yeah, no, he's making traffic. He stop, He slams on his brakes at red lights. This is how I first recognized this guy because I was stuck behind him running late for work like I always do. So he was the bane of my existence before I moved. So. Mm. <laughs> God damn you and your stupid binoculars looking at nothing in particular. It's not like I hope when we reach that age we don't become that. I hope I can be Maury Schwartz from Tuesdays with Maury. Lou Gehrig's disease or not, but uh <laughs> to be able to rest and drift comfortably into the great beyond and be totally cool with it. Totally unlike my grandma right now. I know we're getting away from cars. But she's um, still denying that she's dying, even though she's 97. I think when the first digit of your age is a nine, then you should just accept the inevitable. Right. It might start at eight. You know, I'm not saying a nine-year-old should, but like a 90-year-old. But no, that might, you know, I could go off on a tangent here, but my, to give you an idea, my uh, grandmother from Italy, who lives in Chicago, when she was... Like 10 years ago, they told her, oh, you need to get uh, a cane. And then five years ago, they said, oh, you need to get a walker. And then a year ago, they said, you need to get to be in a wheelchair. And she went, okay, fine, give me the cane. So yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that, that's the sort of hard-headedness people I deal with. So, But I'm, I'm going to try and pull us back to the cars and the review thing here for a second. So I did ask a couple of our fans, like, you know, if they would like to ask you anything. And the dad uh, dress did remind me of one of the questions they wanted to ask. And it had to do with, and I'm going to see if I can find this guy's name real fast. It is, yeah, I can't pronounce his fucking name. I'll just give him credit in the uh, comments down below. He wanted, he basically said, um, you seem to be very courteous when you're like hopping in and out of everyone's cars. You're always doing like the shoe tap and you're always asking may I and everything. Like, is this something that you kind of like put upon just because, you know, you're doing the review and you're just trying to be extra courteous or is this how you kind of approach every vehicle? I think that's just me. That, that yeah. you don't, you're not going to get too far in life by being edgy and aggressive. That's for guys who are 21. Yeah. I'm 34. Yeah. yeah, that being trying trying to be aloof and and instantly familiar with people is for a younger version of myself. Mm -hmm. the, that time it, it's 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 time to be good. Mm -hmm. and then on on to that, has it changed the way you kind of approach driving on a day to day basis as it is like? Since you've started, have you changed anything you do as a person driving around when you're not, you know, when you don't have the GoPro on your head and you're not driving around? I, I'm Matt Farah called me a huge vagina and he's right. The I, I'm not a fast driver. Mm -hmm. I get my jollies with motorcycles when I have them. Mm -hmm. um, I ski and that's when I like to. There, there, there's there's fast in a car and then there's fast on a motorcycle and then there's fast <laughs> going down a mountain <laughs> that's speed man I, I i think liking skiing is, is why i i have no real interest in driving a car all that fast i like mm -hmm. taking corners fast i'd love to go to a driving school like a like a bob bonder on kind of thing that'd be fun or get into autocross but uh Dry, driving like a hothead is something for your early 20s. Mm -hmm. And uh, those days are gone now. 
Do you and, think it's like slowed you down even more since you can go out and enjoy these nice fast cars and then when you get back to your little fit and you're not, you know, <laughs> I think with the fit, I do rev it out more. Like I, I like merging onto the highway and yeah, I go, I think merging on the highway and fit, I'm wide open throttle, but, um, it doesn't move too quick no. and it's, it's, it's fun seeing that, uh, thing go right up and up to, I think, uh, peak torque is like two, five or four five mm-hmm. in, uh, the fit peak horsepower is maybe five, five. And you know, I'll do that. Uh, it, it, man, when I had that Toyota Echo, I could race the guy in the other lane. He doesn't even know a race is going on. <laughs> it was great. There's nothing like being in a slow car driven fast and no one right. else knows how balls to the wall you are doing yeah. in that thing. Especially if it's manual where you can just keep that tiny engine going. As, my mom had my, my mom bleh, used to have an MG and you could Ooh. do that all the time with that. Mm-hmm. The, the MG is like the pre-Miata. Like, pre-Miata sounds like some sort of birth defect, but it's pre-Miata. Yeah. Uh, yep. did, you, did you fit in the MG? I don't know how tall you are. You come across on videos. It's I'm 5'10". Eh, it's so fairly tall. You fit in an MG pretty well? Or? Oh, yeah. There's the MG, and then there's the MG Midget. Uh, uh, some yeah. people see the MG Midget, and that's what they think. But the regular MG is about a Miata size, so mm-hmm. fine. Yeah. Well, I don't fit in a Miata. I'm 6'2". I don't fit in a first-gen. I fit in... I think I can squeeze into a later gen, but I'm not 100%. I used to work with a lesbian who owned a first-gen Miata because that's how that works. And I was in the passenger seat, and my, like, chin and above sat above the windshield. I'm like, this is good. Ooh, yeah, yeah that's no fun. She had a pair of goggles for me, though. That was fun. I was like, here's a pair of goggles. Good. Like, uh, aren't these for your your big-ass dog? Well, they work for you, too. Like, okay. Well, of course there's a big-ass dog. <laughs> I, I see that's the thing you're not supposed to make stereotypes but what what happens when they're there was the dog a german shepherd uh i don't know great dane i was all i could do was judge based on the dog here i was afraid to ask any follow-up questions that exist okay whatever mm-hmm. I, I, I want wolfhound i want to say wolfhound because it was long oh, shaggy thing. Right. yeah I was, I was like this thing is a giant ass and she went through him fast so i'm thinking wolfhound but <laughs> Again, and that's well. I think that's what makes cars fun too. Is like you know the regular car reviews. You do, you don't purposely do it, but these cars do have a character and they do have some connotations associated with them. And it's, they do. It's fun to bring those out and talk about them. Mm-hmm. Like the one of my favorite reviews because I'm a crazy Volvo person is the S60, where it's like, well, the headlights go up and down instead of like you know just like two different dimmers in it because of Volvo. Yeah. It, it has a phone in it and all sorts of weird goofy stuff, and it's. I don't think normal people drive Volvos. Like, no. I say that as a Volvo driver. Like, I, I have yet to meet someone who, and being approached. Yeah, my aunt's crazy. She drives a Volvo. Yeah. Uh, gosh, I think what's what's their SUV one that they have right now? They have the new ones, the XC90, which is the big one that's very pretty, and then they have the little one, which is the uh, XC60. That's the one I, I see. Mm-hmm. I think. Uh, yeah, I think the SC60 can fly under the radar because people may see it. Yeah. But most most people, if they're buying a used car, they're still going to go with like a Honda Pilot or something like that. So mm-hmm. could and be wrong. Yeah. And that's what leaves the opening for me to come in and get fucking Volvos are really super cheap, and then they blow head gaskets. But there's nothing mm. worse than being approached by someone in a Volvo at a gas station because then you're dealing with crazy fucks yeah like, hey you got a volvo i have one of those oh, okay this is gonna be bad yeah <laughs> on that note have you had you take these cars out i'm guessing they're full of gas have you ever had to stop and like you know chit chat i know in the aston martin review you said you were surprised how little attention the car got mm-hmm. was there ever a car that like just got way too much attention for you yeah mm-hmm. the uh orange lotus elise that then, one was the that was the one, one where the where the where the beggar came up, in a Saab Saab nine five, and uh, she was telling her, "I'm an out of work professor." She, she just, "Can you give me money for gas?" And yeah, Farah has a story where he was driving, I don't know what, and someone just comes up. And the first thing out of their mouth is, "Why don't you fill my tank?" And he's like, "Why? I know you got it." Like, Seriously, fuck. Sorry, I was about to swear. Sorry, you can swear. Uh, fuck it. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've been swearing this whole time. I've been like, <laughs> it's the internet. You can do whatever the hell you want on it, right? Right. Yeah. No, but was there a card I got a lot of attention that you didn't think would get a lot of attention? And I'm kind of putting you on the spot with our non pre uh, What is the best of the best? Tell me the number one thing. <laughs> my, my Falcon, uh, every single stop, every single gas station I stopped at yeah. on the way home when I uh, bought that thing in Nashville, drove it back as far as I could uh, yeah. before the real Neil had to come tow me the rest of the way. The... Uh, the every single gas station the old man would appear they would just morph out of the side of the building and instantly launch into a story about how they had a falcon mm -hmm. or i knew someone of this and that because that was the that was the ford taurus of its day it was a uh, a uh it was an, like the, the it was the secretary's car it, right it was an economy, economy car for yeah. for everybody cheap as hell Mm -hmm. and uh, they all remember it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, the Falcon gets tons of attention. From, from, it gets tons of attention from non-car people because mm -hmm. it's, well, I think it looks sexy, but it, uh, Lee Iacocca, when he came in the Ford, thought it had absolutely no styling. Yeah. But the car was so prolific in the, in the same way the Volkswagen Beetle was. Uh, by nature of needing transportation, everybody sort of had one. Yeah. It's a fascinating thing because when I talked to Doug DeMiro, he's getting name dropping, sorry. And we were no, no, I met him already, so. Yeah, I know. But he drove his car. I didn't get to drive his car. I'm, tr I'm try hmm? trying to get a hold of the R32. He just sent me an email today saying, yeah, we can do it. Oh, but he's, he cool. wants to preserve it and he doesn't want to drive all the way. Even though he lives in Philly, the car's yeah. in Jersey. In a, in a storage unit there yeah and uh he i wanted him to you know drive up to where i am because there's beautiful roads mountains and everything don't like filming in philly but he says i don't want to drive this he, he he wants to preserve it so um it's going to be more of a preservation piece than a day driver so and, and you know rightfully so because the values of those things are just going up and up and up so I, I'm gonna have to drive over to Jersey to film it. Mm. Well, oh, Jersey, they do. I have not had a good. There's experience. nice parts. Don't be mean. Oh, I'm just saying. The first time I've been to Jersey about three or four times now, and the first time I ever went to Jersey, I was going to Atlantic City for a bachelor party, and I there get, you go. I get to a turn, and I'm in a left turn. I'm not even a left turn lane. It's two lanes going one way, two lanes going the other way. No left turn indicator or anything. I proceed forward through the green light and a car attempts to accelerate and cut me off. And then when I, you know, slam on the brakes, but it's too far, I'm already in the intersection. Just like Mino, like the only way I can describe her, she looks like she should be like a waitress and an IHOP from like the mm -hmm. 1950s with a cigarette hanging around her mouth. Mm -hmm. Flicks me off and says, welcome to Jersey. And I went, and there's your experience. So <laughs> that that's, I know, I've been, no, I look, listen, great casino is just, I can't imagine filming anywhere in Jersey would be too terribly scenic is kind of where I was going to go with that. It is the Garden State, but the roads are either, from what I can tell, flat or they're in a city. There's not a lot of curves to deal with up there. Uh, well, you, you, need, you need to go like North Jersey or Central Jersey. You, you, went, to, you went through either Philly. Mm -hmm. Did you go through Philly? I did. Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. you, went through, you went to Philly and you went to Trenton. Yeah. It's, it's like judging Pennsylvania... By driving through some of the rust belt parts of it. Mm. So there's very, very nice places in Jersey. Mm. Lakes and everything. Yeah. Just no, got to find them. I did. See, this is why I need Proc here. Because Proc's from Jersey and he'd be chewing my ass out right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you'd actually enjoy Proc. In there. fact, mm. the Vagabond Falcon was built in Jersey. Ah. It's not a Dearborn Falcon. We ran the uh, hmm. uh, serial number. It was made at the Ford Edison assembly plant in Edison, New Jersey. Yeah, so it, it's always been an East Coast Falcon, so that's another thing going for it. Nice. The Jersey yeah. Falcon. That almost a better name than Vagabond Falcon? Jersey Falcon. Jersey Falcon. <laughs> yeah. No, it, I, I kind of lost my train of thought. Damn it. No, I was going to say, I think you'd like uh, Proc's car. His uh, One of his daily drivers he has is a C4 Corvette. Mm, very daily nice. Yeah. yeah. Love them. Yes, they are very fancy. The uh, 
That, that was my attempt to get that out of you, and I didn't. So <laughs> I didn't come up with that line. I know that's from um, a guest Mike. narrator. Yeah, I saw yeah, that. Yeah, that's his line. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it! It's, it's so fancy though. Phil Holmes. Uh... <laughs> yeah, what I enjoy. He oh. can do it much better. <laughs> I, I gotta say, so I, I know a, you know, been into thing this whole business now not business because i'm making any money yet but doing this whole thing for a couple well, of years the now business it is it is regular cars llc so it is a business um it's it's uh it's about breaking even no i meant myself um, i'm not making I, money this is oh i'm sorry I'm no you're good yeah no but i've met uh i know a couple of race car drivers and one of them absolutely loves the f- so fancy bit on the fucking really? g4 he loves it he will when you say race car do you mean track day or like uh, ama or he would not want me to give out his name but he used to race um grand i forget if it was grand Am. he used to race professionally he used to race with the likes of um randy post um andy lolly and a couple of those guys back in the day so mm. Don't know. I'm sorry. I'm unfamiliar. Um, well, Randy does what? Motor Trend now? He's kind of a weird dude. I'm trying okay. to think. Is he uh, do, like the Le Mans series back in the day? Almost. It's like the huh. sort of racing he used to do. So, not famous individual, but he was a race car driver, and he's he loves the so fancy. He'll, to the point where he'll text. I me hope I'm gonna here. try putting my headphones in. I hope I'm not gonna lose you here. All right. We'll, we'll see what happens. I don't know what the iPhone's gonna do. Yeah. Well, they're good. Putting in headphones in three, two, one. Uh, are you still there? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Well, there you are. Okay, that's good. I don't have to hold it up to my ear anymore. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were doing that. That's such. That's not a good... It's about an hour now of just up to your ear, and that's... Well, you were... Yeah, yeah, we'll probably need to wrap it up in like 10 minutes. I need to get back to editing. Yeah, I'm sorry to keep you for so long, but... That's I, okay. I, I want to go to some one of the, some of the questions I wanted to ask you then. Um, so, like you talking earlier about the guys even with sitting in the cars, and there was a cadence and a like momentum to it. And you, as far as I can understand, are a well, you were a literature major in college. Is that what it was? That's right. Yeah, and it's technically English, but you know, uh, te- American lit. Yeah, American lit. So. Y- as it goes on and again to go blow some more smoke up your ass it's the cadence and the narration and what you do with the show it kind of i don't want to it is poetry i guess is a good way to do it and you walk that uh, don't blow that much smoke it's well it's i'm not i don't mean like oh it's like it should be framed and be like on a i am and a down and yeah. Yeah, like writing sonnets yeah. <laughs> i tried to do that once it, it that's freaking hard I don't know why they made us do that in high school. Sonnets are hard as hell. I I think teachers kind of like to torture their students ever so slightly. Just a little bit. Take that yeah. stretch out a little bit. Yeah. But it, to get to the... It's kind of like you walk this very fine line between the informative and the, the very crude and... Do you think that helps with that, or do you think that's just something you've come later in life to, like doing the editing and just repetition? I don't know about questions like that where you give the, and I'm not knocking you here, this is just something I, I've learned, that mm-hmm. so often they give you questions, and, but then make you choose a binary response. Do you think it's this or this? Well, yeah, let me let me change. Like, why right. do you, how do you think, I guess, then the literature or the English lit has helped with the series do you think it's been used I can write yeah so you that do you think that's it and like everything else is kind of just organically you coming out um again i'm not sure okay. uh, what, what you're asking me well, i mean like in in your regular life if okay. you were to hold a conversation with someone and oh would, i get it yeah yeah that th- this is all the gross stuff that goes on in my head that you can't say at at dinner time yeah so, like, this is like the. Like, first... I wonder if I can save all my farts, compress them, and put them in an oxygen tank, and then just fill up balloons in them. Just fill up balloons with them, and then just uh, set them loose at a kids' party. Yeah. You know, eventually those balloons are going to pop. Well, they would float for a while because they'd be lighter <laughs> than air. So there's that. But you, you do, <laughs> and I'm sorry because you make me laugh a lot, and I 
you are one of my favorite people to watch on YouTube. And, mm, thanks. you know, I've had a lot of people on, on the show and to include, I've had, you know, a couple of Cadillac. I've had a guy from Cadillac. I've had Bob Lutz. I've had Matt Ferrar, even Doug DeMiro, Jason. But uh, I've had some very people I'm very big fans of. And you are probably like, when I see a video come out of yours, I will skip over like everything else in the subscription list oh, just to go to it. You're and, too nice. Well, I'm just being honest. This is me okay. in real life. But, okay. And one of the things, and I'll end with this blowing smoke up your ass. Um, you're good. And to, I don't, honestly, I know nothing about motorcycles. I know nothing about airplanes. My field of expertise is like the automotive sector specifically, like, and that's pretty much it. And that's kind of what I know, but I can watch you talk about anything. And you reviewed a lawnmower and yeah, we got to do more of those. Yeah. The lawnmower episode was fantastic, but because it, <laughs> it was all the voice, that's pretty much. But it is. Yeah, the entire thing was the voice. <laughs> Man, that's tough to do. Yeah, yeah, it's got a. I and I tried not to listen to you on the smoking tire because I didn't want to taint what's going on in my head by listening to that. Mm. I did get to that point where that blows out your voice pretty bad, I guess, doing that. But man, it is like to that point where you can review stuff like has that always been and i don't know what you did in the past life has that always been like your field of expertise like you can explain like i think that comes from uh doing college radio where you have to talk mm. and keep it up for an hour yeah that's like you have to of, be able to rip riff yeah. yeah i didn't yeah see i didn't even know so college radio back in the day so mm -hmm. i don't know how to talk. see we're, we're unraveling the mr regular onion of mystery but yeah, I don't know. Like you can explain snow to someone from the tropics and it is amazing and it's fascinating every time. And it makes me laugh heartily. Like my wife thinks I'm crazy. She'll come down, she'll see me watching the show and she's like, what the hell is this? Mm -hmm. And I don't understand any of it. I'm like this, you don't understand. This is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> like up there, like it's, to end with a final bit of blowing smoke up your ass before I give the final plugs, it is very akin to like South Park, I guess is how to put it. It's smart and it's crude and it's a perfect combination of the two. Oh, thanks. So, yeah, and that's pretty much it. And I'll let you get back to editing. And for those of you who are listening, you need to go watch Mr. Regular on Regular Car Reviews. Go to the YouTube. Go follow him on Twitter. You know, just Google Mr. Regular, Regular Car Reviews, and you will find him and watch him and just absorb the knowledge and then <laughs> go read the books he tells you to read because if I had time, I would, but I'm not going to. So. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, just YouTube, Regular Car Reviews, all of the other information you need is there. All right. And uh, I want to thank everyone for listening. And, uh, again, remember to rate us on iTunes, five stars. Helps us out a lot. And everyone have a great evening. Have a good night.